What's up guys, the Panthers here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Um, some stuff happened, some things happened and we went and completed Quan Fran. Now I am going to show you how I completed that SBC uh, here in just a minute. But first of all, I want to show you him in the, in the team. Uh, there he is, 3 star, 4 star, 5 11. I don't know what chem style to put on him. I feel like Anchor is probably the, the more appropriate chem style for Quan Fran. So we're going to apply an Anchor to him. I don't think Shadow is worth it because it's just a, a waste on, on some stats there. Um, he's going to go into our team, which immediately is going to be great news for us. Although DeMarcos isn't bad, I, I, but like we're going to see some gameplay in a second. So first of all, guys, if you could drop a thumbs up, that would be amazing. Let's try and smash 5k likes today. Um, we're going to see some gameplay here today. Um, I, di I didn't have Partey in my team for Foot Champs. I was using him on stream. Um, one of the guys that watches my stream, Lubo, who finished 29-1 and this week and, and got into the top 100 for the second week running, uh, said that he really enjoys the 4-1-3-2. So I'm going to practice this week with the 4-1-3-2 and see if I can add another formation into my uh, repertoire. Uh, and then so off the back of that, um, for me to use Juan Fran and or DeMarcos at the time, I needed to put uh, Nacho on the right-hand side and Varane on the left-hand side. Uh, what that means is that Partey uh, was a necessary player to get in there. So now, we're like, I know he's not the tallest. He does have medium... Uh, well, he has high height. Ooh. I thought he had medium high. That's a little bit of a problem for me, but at the same time, not really. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do that. And that is going to put e almost everybody onto 10 chem. Damn it. It actually ruins it, doesn't it? Mares only goes on to seven. So I either got to use Mares on seven or Partey on seven because I'm not using Fred anymore. Because of the 4 1 3 2, I need two wingers. So Partey is my CDM. De Bruyne is my centre mid. Sane and Trezeguet are my strikers. In fact, let me just show you the team because uh, I set it up already. So uh, when we look at it here, this is what the team looks like in game. So De Bruyne and Partey in the middle there, Trezeguet and Sané, Lucas and Mares, and that's what it looks like. So if I take out Mares and put in Fred and then put Lucas in so everyone gets 10 chem, I will be using Fred potentially as my centre mid and De Bruyne as my striker. And I want a pace merchant up front. I want Sané to be up there because he's just too good. So I've got to make the choice going through today's games. Uh, or well, go, well, from future games, I've got to make the choice as to whether I want Mares on seven, or do I want Party on seven? Now, with Mares on seven, this is him on six, I believe, isn't it? What do his attributes boost to? Pace is a little bit up there. The rest of his stats aren't aren't really boosted that well. If I, I mean, I can get the extra. I can, get, I can get him up to 8, actually. If we convert him to a right forward, that'll give him one extra chem point. And then if I put a Premier League manager on, um, that will get him another chem point. So we can pop him in there. So now Partey is on 9. Mares is on 8. And then I would have to convert Partey to a CM. So Mares gets a nice boost there, actually, yeah. So that is quite nice. And then if we go and get ourselves... Obviously, I want to put the shadow on Partey. So, I, I don't mind Mares uh, sitting there chilling on 8 chem. That's not a problem. So, let's convert him up to there. No problem at all. Let's go and get our chem styles here. Pop a shadow on him. Last one in the club as well. So, uh, nicely utilized there. And uh, that's that. So, there you go. He gets a nice big pace boost, which is good. He's got good physicals. Not the greatest reactions. People on the stream told me he's a beast. I hope, I hope they're right. Because if he's not a beast... We messed up, and Nzonzi would have been a better, better bet for us with the Nzonzi Florenzi scent like pairing. But we're trying something new. I do believe that Juan Fran is a massive upgrade for us. Obviously, with the Anchor Chem style, 84 acceleration, 97 sprint speed, 99 slide tackle, 99 stand tackle, 95 marking, 92 interceptions. That's great. 95 aggression and 85 strength with 87 stamina and 84 jumping. Happy days. Um, so this is the, the squad that I'm going to be playing with this week in Fut Rivals. Already as well in Fut Rivals, just so you guys can see, I am up into Division 3. Um, I don't know if you can see in the top right-hand corner because my face cam is there. But there you go. My skill rating is up into Division 3. I'm only a few thousand points more than Rank 1. So we've got a lot of grinding to go this week. Obviously, it got to 32k last week. So I'm going to need to get about 14,000 points, maybe 15,000 points over the course of Monday through Wednesday. 
eight to ten games a day should do that, but that's a lot of games to play. Um, but I'm going to be excited to play with this team. New formation, new team. Um, but with that being said, guys, we're now going to get into me showing you the completion of Juan Fran and then ten more Fart Champs games. Let's go. All right, guys. So into building Juan Fran. Um, you're going to see, first of all, Sergi Roberto there as an untradeable. On stream last night, I did two two-player packs. I forgot to record them for the video, and I ended up packing uh, 85 Felipe Luis and 84 Sergio Roberto, which obviously dramatically reduced the price of uh, Juan Fran. Um, so the reason why I went and did Fran Juan Fran, and, and first and foremost, uh, RB3K said, I think it's a mistake not to do Juan Fran. You have Varane and he'll start until you pack a damn icon centre-back, which he's not wrong about that. Varane is as good as an end game centre back as we are going to see. Uh, Juan Fran is the best right back in the game compared to Prime Zanetti and Carl Walker. He wins in every stat other than a couple that he listed. He's tall, great skill moves, high weak foot, high medium work rates. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, after like talking it through, it's, it's so hard to, to understand someone's perspective and, and, and opinion on something when it's just your comment versus how I interpret it compared to when I'm discussing it openly with people back and forth. So when I was streaming and we got into talking about it a lot more, you know, a lot deeper, um, I, did, I, I have Partey in the squad, which obviously you guys saw. So obviously he's strong links to him and then obviously soft links to Varane. And then because of Adan and Nacho, I've got like a really good right-hand side there that I can just use for a fair while. Now, I'm not overly sold on uh, Party or Partey. I don't know how we say his name. Um, but generally speaking, with Ram, what I did, sorry, with um, Juan Fran, what I did is I used a lot of my untradeables that I had in the club and didn't really have to spend too many coins. So obviously, we've got a couple of packs back for it, which the first one, as you saw, there was terrible. Now, for the second version of Juan Fran, um, as we go and clear our trade poll here as well. For the second team of Juan Fran, um, I used a big player that I think a lot of people are going to be miffed about, and that is the UCL Vertonghen. Now, I, I've enjoyed using the UCL Vertonghen. Um, absolutely, I did. I think I played like 50 games with him in total, and I know that he has a sale value of currently like 250,000 coins. So in that sense, I know he's untradeable for me, so I can't sell him. Um, but generally speaking, like a, it, the stream themselves were kind of 50-50 split on whether or not I should use him or not. And um, my logic and reasoning behind actually using him is, now that I am, you know, committing to getting Juan Fran, there is little to no chance Vertonghen will get into my squad in the near future because I'm, I have to use Varane and Nacho and Adan to get the chemistry for everyone. So, you know, the next centre-back upgrade is, is for me, kind of going to have to be a La Liga centre-back, uh, an Icon centre-back, or a Spanish centre-back. Um, or, 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 like, a centre-back that works better with the links that I've got, you know, because with Vertonghen, I could use Danny Rose instead of Mendy, didn't really want to. But um, I think because we're committing to Juan Fran as now we pick him up and, and have him there as, as the walkout, I think it's smart to go away from, um, you know, to go away from using Vertonghen because, he, I mean, he wasn't even getting into my team anyway. So in terms of what we're doing here with the pack only road to glory, if it was a first owner, sorry, if it was a, a regular road to glory, I would never have used a Vertonghen because he would have had much more service somewhere else. And some of the people in the stream were saying, you know, why not keep that Vertonghen until you can use him in SBC where it benefits you? And my argument to that is, well, the Juan Fran benefits me. You know, we've, we've committed to him. We've got him. We've popped him into the team. And, you know, like, like I say, looking at it in terms of the first owner SBC, um, it actually does make sense to get Juan Fran because it is, you know, I was literally complaining in the last video that Florenzi is not good enough. And then there is this top tier right back as an SBC ready for me and I was scared the, the main reason I was scared is because you know for me if I would have bought every item and didn't use untradeables I would have used uh, about 120,000 coins of my 300 OK in, in the bank and that's a big chunk of coins to use if you know when screamer promos come out this Friday if they come out if there's another flashback this Friday you know maybe I've just wasted some some cards where I could have got a better player but yeah, I mean, after, as I say, after talking it through with the stream, it, it was a problem position for me. He fits into my team. The upgrade was available. Why wouldn't I go and get him? You know, why wouldn't I go and get him? And so I did go and get him. And like I say, you know, apologies to those I kind of dismissed through the comment section um, of the videos. It's, it's because it's, 
is, is, it is so much more difficult to speak video per video with people in a back and forth on comments compared to speaking on a stream and getting people's like life live comments and, and you know, real time comments, I, I guess is, is what I'm going for. Um, the other packs you're seeing here, guys, are just my squad battles packs and my weekly um, pre-order pack. So 215K from the pre-order, 15K and something else from squad battles. Um, but the next comment, guys, we've got is from Victor. He says, do you think you'll transition from the pack only RTG to a normal RTG at any point this year? Last episode, you discussed in how order to make upgrades for your team, you need very specific players for each position to make legitimate upgrades to your team. What if the next few weeks you pack good players, but players that don't really fit what you're trying to build? That combined with the fact that you already have hundreds of thousands of coins anyway and a spectacular team for someone who hasn't spent a dime. Just wondering, keep up the good work. I'm really enjoying the series. So I always set out in my mind to go to at least Christmas. You know, I wanted to give this a real, real chance. And the reason why I decided as Christmas as the the kind of review point is because with Futmus and how many SBCs we get throughout Futmus, you know, for the last two years running, we've got like 30 SBC cards. As long as I've got my account into a really, really clever position by that time, that could be when we can make dramatic changes and, and, and go from there. So the, the idea, I guess, is um, go till Christmas, see where the land lies, see how many coins we have, see what kind of team we have, see if I'm even hitting elite in foot champs at that stage. You know, if I'm still struggling around the gold one mark, um, that's where I might turn around and say, okay, guys, it's time to change from a pack only first owner road to glory to a regular road to glory and go out and buy players. However, I like, I, I really, really want to dedicate a whole game cycle uh, as we now go into our gameplay. I really want to dedicate a whole game cycle to doing a pack only RTG because I, I want to see what I can achieve by the end of it. You know, I, I, that that's for me. I, but if if it is getting just far too difficult, and if it if it is a case where you know in another month or another six weeks I'm still using the same like eight to ten players, I will sit there and look at that and think, okay, so in terms of content, which is what this is about, you know, this road to glory is about me getting you guys good content. In terms of content that won't be entertaining. You know, seeing me play with, for example, Fred for 800 games. Nobody cares about that. So, you know, I have got to get lucky in packs. One thing that I definitely want to focus on as well a lot more, which I'm not really doing too much right now because I'm just, I am way, I'm, for me personally, everything will start to move way quicker and way better when I can move into my other office, um, which should be uh, th this week, hopefully, at some stage or another. But I've got to make sure that I continue trading and grinding and getting coins so that when SBCs come out, I don't have to sit here and think, oh, should I get him? I'm like, let me just go and get him. It, like, you know, just get him, pop him into the team, even if it's as a sub or anything, and go from there. Um, in terms of gameplay here today, guys, before I get into the next comment, um, I, 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 you probably already saw because I, I, did, I forgot to cover it at the start of the video, but I ended up getting only 21 wins, right? So I went 21 and 9. I actually, I actually got to 18 and 3, right? And I went from 18 and 3 to 21 and 9. So I went 3 wins and 6 losses. Um, part of that was because I was coming up against really good players from really with really good teams. Um, I came up against two top 100 players. One of them was Pro Hunter, and I think he beat me just 1-0. Um, I can't remember the name of the other guy. You'll see him in the video. And I came up against two guys that finished Elite one elite two and one elite one so they tweeted me after the game shared their records and their teams and stuff um i threw away two games specifically very frustratingly this one not so much um i definitely controlled this game but both of us were limited with chances i went one nil up and what i really noticed and experienced through playing this last 10 games was a few things so the first thing i experienced was that not having a backup plan is a huge mistake I went into this weekend league with the 4-2-3-1 and that was it. I didn't have any defensive formation, any aggressive attacking formation. I literally was just like, let me just play with the 4-2-3-1 and just see what I can do. And if I can win, I win. And if I don't, I don't. And that was a mistake because in that in that game that we just lost there, I was 1-0 up leading into the late stages of the game. I should have switched into a five-back formation, just started sweating it out and burning the clock down. And if I would have still then lost, that would have been like, okay, I tried everything and I lost. But because I didn't and I just stuck with the 4-2-3-1 and I stuck trying to get a second goal, I ended up getting hit on two counters to lose the game. And that that's me just being bad. That's that's me just making huge mistakes. You know, that that has nothing to do with the team or anything to do with the gameplay. That is me just being lazy. Literally just being lazy. Um, into this game again, 
Uh, th this, guy, this guy was a good player. He, I mean, he, he just did... Every time I come up against Dries Mertens, I just struggle, man. It, like, that guy just seems to put goals past me. But I end up pulling it back to 3-2. Uh, and then he ends up scoring a look at that for a goal. I mean, that second Dries Mertens goal was insane, the way he drove that shot. But I've been, I've been practicing a lot of moving my goalkeeper recently to try and block those finesse shots. And uh, it's been relatively effective, but it does come unstuck sometimes where I move the goalkeeper to try and block the finesse shot. They'll play an extra pass and then they've just got an open goal. Um, so I got the game back to 4-3 and then he hits another insane shot with Mertens to 5-3. Uh, I think I ended up pulling this one back to 5-4 late on and then I just I couldn't get back into the game. I couldn't get the uh, fifth goal. But, that, I mean, this was a good game. This was a game that I came out of feeling good, feeling happy. Um, you know, even though I lost the game, I think he ends up scoring another goal here because now I, am, I, I went to ultra-attacking on the D-pad. And there you go. I moved the keeper right there and he scores a goal because of it. I was expecting a shot to the far post. So I moved the goalkeeper out of the way and just scores an easy goal. This was definitely a game, though, that was it was a good opponent with a good team. I think he was one of the guys, actually, that finished in the elite levels. And, and it was quite an even game. So I have no, no problems coming out of these games thinking hey that's okay after that there was a couple of um a couple of games that i lost where i i was upset and funnily enough this guy right here all stars fc earlier on today not like i played this obviously sunday but earlier on today i played this guy in fuck rivals and i beat him um so this game again i go one nil up after two minutes and watch how late it is in the game when i concede the goals that end up costing me the game uh, you know, it's it's the 83rd minute. And do you know why he scores there? Two reasons. Number one, um, it, like, I, I, number one, I, I haven't done anything to defend better uh, as, as we go and score to go 2-1 up. I think I beat him here as well, actually. This is actually, this is a game that I won, sorry. So we end up going with that one. Two wins, two losses. So for my last six games, I just needed to win four. I needed to go four and two to get elite. The next game was a big issue for me. Uh, the next game was was one of those times where I should have personally put down the controller afterwards and gone and taken a long break. This guy didn't have a great squad by any stretch of the imagination. You know, he's got Royce, he's got Werner, he's got Farman UCL, and he's got Goretzka. Maybe even Witzel is okay, but it, generally speaking, that team is, it's not a great team. It's, it's, it's you know, he will struggle. I end up going 1-0 down against this guy with a shot there from Werner, a good goal to be fair, and, and I was just all over this guy, right, I was just controlling this game so, so much, and eventually I got back into the game with a header from Griezmann, I brought on as a sub, which put us to 1-1, I went into extra time and I eventually got the goal, and I felt like it was a deserved goal, lovely goal there from Griezmann as well to put me 2-1 up, however, this guy ends up equalising a little bit later on in the game from a corner of his own, so I scored from a corner and then he scores from a corner, uh, and it's one of those cases where I'm trying to bring the goalkeeper out, but sometimes it just doesn't register. I have messaged EA about that. That is something they're aware of and trying to fix. And then I lost on penalties. And after this game, although I wasn't getting angry, like because I, I'm trying to really just remove that from what I am or who I am and how I become, although I wasn't getting angry at this game, it caused me to just lose focus. I'd say that was fair. And you can see here by the match stats, I had 23 shots and 13 on target. And this guy was just so deep, you know, just trying to... He literally just was trying to hit me on counters as well. And when I went 2-1 up, instead of me just playing defensively and letting him just, you know, absorbing the no pressure that he's putting on me, I tried to get more goals and that was my mistake. So I've gone into the next game with no focus. And in this game, this again was just one of the most frustrating games. And what you'll see is here, you'll see me switching into my defenders. I switched into Mendy and moved him out of the way. I switched into Varane and moved him out of the way. And it allowed this guy in behind me very easily to score a goal after 15 minutes. And at this point, this guy literally switched to five at the back and just didn't want to play the game. You'll see here by the match stats, he didn't have another shot. Uh, I, he, he Like five at the back there. He didn't have any shots. He didn't have much possession. Like, sorry, he had a lot of possession because he was trying to burn the clock like when he had the ball. But he, he just wasn't trying to play the game. And I've been beating people that have been playing like this. But because I'd lost focus from the last game that I lost... I was I was struggling to just play the right way. And after that, I just fell apart, quite honestly. I fell apart. I, I kept switching into my defenders. I kept trying stupid attacking things because I was panicking. And I essentially just choked. I completely bottled Elite 3. I was I was in a great spot for it. Like I say, I got to 16-1. and 1. I got to 18-3. and 3. 
and I bottled it. So for me to be able to get to Elite 3 still at this stage, I needed to win all of my final three games. I ended up picking up a win in the third from last game. So, you know, I've got two games left. I win them both. I get 23 wins, no problem at all. Um, and that is where in the 20, in my game 29, I came up against the top 100 guy. Um, and uh, he ended up beating me 1-0, I think. So, uh, or did I, did I already play against Pro Hunter? I can't remember. But anyway, I lost, I lost uh, the next game. And that was obviously a problem. Um, but yeah, so I, I ended up winning this game late in the game as well. An extra time, Dries Merton's on as a sub for me. La Croquette is in the box. I get it to Trez again. I was watching my games back because I was talking to a guy that's in the stream called Lubo. And he got 29-1 and this week. And he also got top 100 last week. And um, he told me that what he does is that after he records all his games and then he goes back and watches the losses back to see where he was making mistakes. So I went and obviously I record all of my games. So I went into my games and I started watching. Um, so this is the guy that I played. This guy, oh, young. I think this guy also finished top 100. He messaged me after the game, but see how he has like Ronaldo and Pogba, Ramos and Courtois. These are, I need these players, man. <laughs> um, but so Lubo said he just goes back and watches his games and, and learns from the mistakes that he made. So when I was watching my games back in the specifically the three losses, the one that I lost on penalties and then the two where I was one nil up going into the last 10 minutes of the games, I just noticed that on both on all three occasions, I kept switching into my defenders and I haven't been doing that. And again, here you see it, I switch into my defender and it allows Pogba easy, easy space for a goal. And yesterday on Saturday and on Friday I wasn't switching into my defender there I wasn't taking control of him and, and he was blocking the passes and the chances and the shots and everything was great and then again I'm 2-1 up with 20 minutes to go and now in the last dying minutes look at that I select another defender if I just let the AI control that player there it will block the shot and it won't be a problem. Um, I then end up losing to a goal I like frustrating. He takes a shot with Ronaldo here and then gets a free kick because he, he like I don't even know how he got a free kick. Like, I was just, I wasn't even controlling the guy that gave him a free kick, right? It, like, he just kind of runs, he just kind of stops after he takes the shot. And then he hits me with the time finesse shot. And I can't stop those, you know, against CR7s, I can't stop those. So, in the game that we had to win um, to get into, to, to have a, a chance in our last game for Elite 3, I just got unlucky. I, I'd say that's, that's as far as it goes. But what I should have done and what I didn't do that was quite frustrating is I should have taken a break after five games. I'd won two and lost three. I should have gone and taken a break and come back and I just played through all of them. So I was playing angry. I was playing dissatisfied. Not angry, angry. I wasn't actually getting angry. I was, just, I was playing stupid. That's what I'd say. I, I, was, I, I should have just waited longer. I should have just spent more time just away from the game. You know, I, I had all day to play them. I didn't need to rush them. I could have gone and recorded some videos. I could have just gone and done some stuff and then come back. Now that we've only got 30 games a weekend, 10 games a day, there's no excuses for me to rush through all my games and press through them like 100 miles per hour. As I say, even after the four games, after I went two and two, I should have been like, let me just take a break because this obviously isn't working out very well. Um, somebody else uh, made a good point as well on Twitter to me today. Uh, I know the the video gameplay is finished now, so I, I don't know what I'm going to put here. Probably just a screenshot of the team or something. Um, but somebody made a, a good point to me on Twitter today about when you play your games. You know, if you ca if you can get as many of your games done Friday and Saturday, what you're going to be doing is when your form is really high, you're going to be playing against people with really high form that are not necessarily great. Specifically, if you play all your games on Friday, let's say you're plus five, plus six, plus seven, because you're 20, well, no, 10 and three or 15 and, uh, you know, five or something like that. You're going to be playing against guys who aren't, aren't like doing great. But when you finish your games on Sunday, you're essentially playing your games against people that are doing the same thing as you. So when, I'm, I, when I was 16 and one, uh, I played Pro Hunter and he was 25 and 0. Um, so, you know, if I would have play, carried on playing my games on Friday, I would have never matched against him. Now I might match against somebody else that beat me, or if I'd have waited until right at the very end of Sunday and played my games late, I would have never matched against him because he would have finished his games by then. So when you play your games is so important if you're on a high elo and it's it's crazy to me. It's crazy. So I want to I want to try and figure out the best times to play my games next weekend. I might try and get through 20 on Friday and the final 10 on Saturday and just take Sunday off. 
or I might try and get through 15 on Friday and 15 on Saturday, even if it means that we have a bad weekend, just to experience it, just to figure it out. Um, anyway, sorry I haven't got any more time for some comments today, guys. I ended up just talking a lot about the gameplay. But what I'm, what I'm enjoying about this series is I can see my mistakes. You know, I can see that in those final 10 games I wasn't playing good. I kept switching into my defenders instead of letting the AI defend for me. There was, again, much like week one, there was a couple of losses in there where if I would have just done a few things differently... I would have ended up taking those as dubs and I would have got elite. So I can use that as a platform to build on for next weekend. And instead of now just picking up the 4231, I am going to create a five back. I am going to create a 3421 just to make sure that I've got all the tools available to me because I'm playing myself, man. Like, uh, you know, at least three of those games there where we were winning late, I should have, they should have developed into wins. You know, the guys that finish elite and the guys that finish top 100, they don't throw away those games. I was throwing away those games. I need to work on that. I need to improve on that. And we're going to do that this week through Rivals. I'm going to try and press up into uh, Division 2 for Rivals this week. But this guy is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rate, and comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.